Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today is the last part about the representations of the symmetric group. Not that there is not much more to say. There's a lot more to say, but at one point, of course, I need to cut it. Actually, one later than I wanted to in the first place, I only wanted to do three videos on representations of symmetric groups, but I figured that going around the young lattice is kind of, no, the young lattice is just too good. No, it's just so good. I definitely want to do a video on the young lattice. And that's what we are going to discuss today. Um, as I said, this is the last one for the symmetric group, and then we jump to monoids. But uh, there's a lot more to say about symmetric groups. What we have seen so far is, uh, well, the indexing using Young diagrams, the construction of the modules using Specht modules, the character formula using Frobenius's character formula. And now I would like to study all symmetric groups at once. Uh, we'll see what that means. So the idea is that symmetric groups are actually really nice objects if you study them all at once. So there is what people call a tower, which is really just a sequence of embeddings um, from Sn minus one to Sn to Sn plus one and so on. And the embeddings are really simple. So you take your element here in S Sn, which you could think of as a string diagram, so some box with a number of outgoing strings, and you embed it into so Sn minus one minus one, I should be, I should I should have chosen n and minus one and whatever. So you embed Sn minus one into Sn by just adding an additional strand. So here's the embedding from S2, which is just the purple uh, into S3, which is everything. And of course, as soon as you cross the last strand, you use the last strand. So those elements are not in the image of S2. So the core set here is always, of course, uh, n fractorial over n minus one fractorial. That's what you, divide here by so a uh, certain size. Um, not quite obvious why this should keep enough information. I mean, this number is usually pretty big, it's n. <laughs> so if n is big, n is big, what a surprise. If n is big, n is big, yeah. Um, but you can still use this tower to study all Sn at once. Kind of this idea is, well, we have these embeddings. These embeddings are relatively nice. And whatever I'm going to say is with reference to those embeddings. There could be really crazy embeddings. I'm taking those that you see here, the easy strand adding embedding. And maybe we could take it from there and study kind of all representations of symmetric groups at once. And actually we can, which is a bit of a surprising result. Um, and here's the idea. So we want to use induction restriction. That's our way to go from, well, restriction is a way to go from S3 to S2, for example. And induction would be the way to go from S3 to S4. So what we would like to do is we would like to study induction and restriction on what we by now now is a good indexing set for the simples on Young diagrams. And if you do the calculation, it's not so hard in uh, the terms of the Specht modules, for example. So if you restrict uh, the trivial representation from S3 to S1, as from S3 to S2, then everything still acts as a trivial representation. So you get the trivial representation. If you um, restrict the sign representation, then everything still acts by a sign. So you get the sign representation. And what you can check using the Specht modules, for example, is that this guy, if you restrict, you get this decomposition. And that's because if you remember the examples with the Specht modules of the plus and minus eigenvalue, which you can now use to split the representation into, well, a trivial one and the sign one. And this suggests a, a nice rule, which is actually true in general, that the restriction rule is really simple. You look at your diagram and you look at all the ways to remove boxes such that you still get a legal diagram. So here I have two ways to remove boxes such that I still get a legal diagram and I get all of these as summons. And here's just one way and here's also just one. And that's the rule, that's a restriction rule. It's pretty simple. It's really simple, a nice, beautiful restriction rule uh, for the simple representations of the symmetric groups. And the induction rule is not much more complicated. Proving it is a bit more complicated because induction is a bit more complicated, uh, but you can use, for example, for Venus reciprocity. Um, induction rule is equally beautiful. It's just to add the sum over all ways of adding a box such that you still have a legal configuration. So I could add a box here or I could add a box here and I still get legal configurations. So the induction from S3 to S4 of the trivial representation is actually this representation. So here I could add a box here, I could add a box here or I could add a box here. So I get those three summons. And here I could add a box here and I can add a box here. So I get those two summons. Relatively easy. Beautiful, easy, adding boxes, removing boxes, induction and restriction. So you can kind of see that they are always already in some form dual to one another as uh, well suggested certainly by Fabinius reciprocity. And then you write down this beautiful thing, which is the young lattice, 
which is exactly the lattice of uh, reduction and restriction. So if you, you're here and you uh, restrict, you just look downstairs and you get the direct sum here. And if you're here and you want to uh, induce, you just look upstairs and you get the corresponding direct sum. And this is true in any step of the young diagram, which uh, young lattice, which I have cut it off. This is an infinite lattice. And it gives you induction and restriction for all symmetric groups at once it, with this super easy rule, which I think is, is pretty beautiful. So you have this ridiculously easy rule to remove or add boxes whenever that makes sense. And this is your induction and restriction, which is really, really cool. And it leads to a kind of a fun fact here, which I would like to uh, do for you right now. So if you do, uh, well, this way, so first induce, then restrict, you could try to compare to first restrict, then reduce, uh, induce, and it works as follows. So if I take this diagram as an example, and I first induce, I get the sum over those three, right? And then I restrict, so I go down all the arrows again, one, two, three, four, five. I get this once, this three times, and this once. Okay. And I could do the same in the other direction. So I could first uh, restrict and I get those two. And then I could induce and I get one, two, three, four. So I get one, this one appears twice, and this one appears once. And note that it's almost the same. You're just one short here in the middle. And indeed, this is a relation does, uh, we could check this in general on the young lattice. This is a relation that is satisfied. If you induce and restrict, that's the same as restricting and inducing, but you're off one. So you just have plus identity. And this holds, if you like that, as functors actually. So as functors, there would be an isomorphism here. And this kind of categorifies the Leibniz rule if you want. So the product rule for the simple, uh, take the derivative and multiply by x compared to multiply by x and take the derivative, which are almost the same, but you're just short one element. If you try that, well, uh, for example, if we would try that on x squared, so if I first take product with x, um, so where I first do this one, then I get to x cubed, then I, uh, well, boop, 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 then I take the derivative, so I get to 3x squared. And if I do it in the opposite way, I get to 2x squared, and they're just the same up off by with one off by one error, and this off by one error is nicely categorified in the one in the young lattice because in the induction and restriction functors are also off by one in the young lattice. Anyway, this was a lot of waffle. So the young lattice is a beautiful way to encode all representations of the symmetric group at once and relate them by an induction and restriction, which satisfies this ridiculously easy adding box or removing box rules and this beautiful categorified Leibniz rule where you. Um, first induce and then restrict, which is almost the same as first restricting and then inducing, you're just short by one. And in a fancy language of functors, this is just an isomorphism of functors where you just get a direct sum with identity uh, on one side. Anyway, this was the last part about representation of symmetric groups. Sadly, because representation of symmetric groups are a lot of fun and I could go on forever, but at one point, of course, I need to stop. <laughs> I probably, you probably want, want me to stop anyway. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.